What's up everyone? I'm Scarlett and I am going to be one of the virtual co-hosts of this year's Fremont Solstice Parade. I am honestly so excited because the Fremont Parade has always been a staple and one of the most iconic events that happens every summer in the city of Seattle, specifically in the beautiful neighborhood of Fremont. When I first moved to Seattle from a very small town, my first job was at the ballroom, which is a front row bar that's in the center of it all. And I'll never forget watching the Naked Bicycle Parade go by me and just being kind of shocked, right? And um, I had never seen anything like that. And it just really inspired me to go outside of my comfort zone and get a little weird. That's what the parade is all about, embracing your weird, just getting together with friends, going a little crazy, celebrating summer. And as you know, summers in Seattle are the most beautiful ever. We are so excited to still be doing the festival this year. Although it is going to be a little different, we are doing it virtually. We are going to be showcasing past, present, and future of the Fremont Solstice Parade. So buckle in and get ready for an amazing show. You came to me in a dream Yeah, I saw us on an odyssey Somewhere I couldn't tell you when But we were crossing our frequencies A place that we could escape to And no one else could find Said, Kia, where you taking me to? How is this all in my mind? the universe over find ourselves at any point in time 
Hi, I'm Barb Lukey, and my friend Peter Toms and I co-founded the Fremont Solstice Parade back in 1989. People sometimes ask, why did we do it? We did it because we felt like we had to do it and because it's so much fun. We had both been part of an event in Santa Barbara when we each lived down there, the Santa Barbara Summer Solstice Celebration. And while we had both participated, knew that feeling about taking over the streets and celebration, Peter had been an artist in residence and I'd worked on staff, eventually being the executive director. So I understood the structure. Peter has this charisma factor that makes people want to jump on to what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And we both really miss the communal aspect of creating art together. Hi, I'm Peter Toms. Welcome to the 1991 Fremont Solstice Parade. The parade is a human-powered, non-commercial, community-based event inspired by the Great Carnival in Rio and Trinidad. Wow, it worked! And just in time, here comes the parade! They're great. They're a lot of fun. What are they called? I don't know, but they're a lot of fun. <laughs> These are the great, I don't know, but they're a lot of fun flags. And I see a sister fairy, Monica. And Sarah, come over here. Do you need a wish today? Please. Okay, close your eyes. Make a wish. And it is granted for you. Yay. And here's fairy Kelsey. Fairy named Nancy, and here she is. And Fairy Monica. And it will come true. Thank you. Nothing like a parade. See some princesses and fairies. Come here a minute. Tell me about your costume. Well, mm, she's telling me that we um, that place where we started and we got all this stuff. So I just decided to be um, a fairy. You're a great fairy. Can you say something for our audience? Hi. Hi. Bikers! Tell me about being on that bike. Oh, it's fine.
confining yourself. This is a juxtaposition of the human consciousness that is hard to describe unless you're doing it. And really the best seats in the parade are in the middle of it. Because many people just do not have that much satisfaction in their daily lives. But it's possible to get satisfaction and it's possible to feel more alive and it's possible to feel more alive with a lot of other people. And it's a powerful, powerful feeling that can really change the world. We've been changing each other's lives as we've put this on for 32 years. And I think we're gonna keep doing it. modeled the Fremont Solstice Parade off the experience we had in California where artists are paired with anyone who walks in the door and wants to unleash their creativity. We're all creative people and we're all artists but some people are born with a little more creativity than others and so the model always was meant to be that artists with great skills would inspire others to expand their skills, setting good examples, and doing more than anyone can do by themselves. We knew someone would come when we put out the call. We just didn't know how wonderful the people would be or who the people would be who came. But they have been more wonderful and stupendous than anything I could have begun to imagine when we decided to start the parade over lunch one day on Lower Queen
a question about floats and a little history 30 years ago floats started with the parade in fact uh, one of the very first floats that I know of was the Egyptian barge which I had the pleasure of actually pushing it was the lead float in the 1989 parade made by Peter Toms Floats uh, begin to um, emerge where bands wanted to have floats to carry them so they could play music. Um, as that progressed along, it went from like marimba bands on floats to electrified bands on floats. And people figured out that Honda inverters were quiet and allowable. And so we had big bands on big floats. And these are boat trailers with swivel wheels in the front and a push bar in the back, sometimes push bars in the front so you can guide them. And over time, we collected so many, we needed to store them. We had to have a float yard. And we had to have various sizes of floats. You know, the smallest would be maybe 10 foot. The largest would be uh, double axled um, 30 feet. In fact, one of the marimba floats is almost 40 feet long. We have a, a float yard now, and it used to be under the Fremont Bridge, and then it was um, over in a metro storage building on 34th, and then it was... <laughs> It was up next to the Troll, and then it was on a dead-end street over in Ballard, and finally we were able to uh, rent a space from the city, and now we're next to the canal, and it stores all our floats, all our materials, and then get them all, any that need to be moved down to the start of the parade, which is at the yard, fortunately, and then the floats take off, parade solstice morning and make their way down the route all the way to gas works where they're on display. We have got about 10 of these and we're hoping in 2021 all of them are in the parade. <laughs> Get down from here! Ah. <laughs> 
adopting the green hat to support the Fremont Arts Council, a volunteer organization that helps to support our community by helping everyone become an artist. That's right, all of you can be artists with the help of Fremont Arts Council by donating today by texting green hat to 44321. That's green hat to 44321. Come art with us. Hi, my name is Bridget and I'm a current board member for the Fremont Arts Council. I moved from New Orleans to Seattle three years ago and I showed up a few months after I moved to a headdress workshop for Feast of the Winter Solstice. And I walked into the powerhouse and most people walk into the powerhouse and they're just like, what? because they've never seen art and props and all the stuff that we have. And I walked in and thought, wow, this looks like some of the places I've worked before. Um, this kind of feels like home. And I made headdresses that day. I came back the next weekend and made more headdresses. I helped with the site installation for Feast that year and the volunteers who happen to be board members um, asked me if I would like to be on the board, if I would like to run for the board, and I agreed. And so I joined the board. And about a year to the day after I moved, I found myself in the middle of the street in Fremont, pacing the Fremont Solstice Parade and planning the celebration at Gasworks. coming to you from the Fremont Solstice Satellite Operations Center. My name is Harper. And my name is Roman. And we are having excellent weather today. We really are. I can feel this really nice <sighs> gentle breeze just blowing across the couch. This is really going to be excellent weather for watching a parade today. You know, this weather really reminds me of the first time I encountered the Fremont Arts Council. Oh, yeah? It was in 1992 down at Golden Gardens Park, and there was a huge bonfire, and we were celebrating the summer solstice. Well, I joined the Arts Council in 2000, mostly based on the machinations of the Cirque de Flambe. Hmm, that's hot. 
It was. So throughout the years, you must have been a part of many different ensembles. Yeah, I've been part of the parade so many times. Um, it's the art and the people and creating. Like we were bird dancers one year. Oh, we nice. made these great beak uh, oh, hats nice. yeah. and we danced for the parade. We had a routine. Um, one year I was Carmen Miranda and I made this great costume with all this fruit for my head. One year I was part of the Pandora's box and I was a vice and it was a scary thing. Devilish. Yeah, it was fun though. It's been fun. Uh, so probably the most significant thing I've done for the parade is that for a decade I was the parade monitor at Stoneway 34th. And so I wasn't necessarily part of the parade, but the parade came like right through where I was. Yeah. And so I got to dance around with all the different ensembles and stuff like that. And I got to really interact with all of the people in the background of the parade. Oh. Now, there's all these different jobs that happen with the people that actually aren't in the parade that are really necessary to make the whole thing move forward. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can relate to that. Because in 2012, I decided to join the board of directors as part of the Fremont Arts Council. Yeah. And I did that for a while, and eventually I became president. President for life. And that's, you know, really satisfying work to keep this parade going, keep this community going. It's so important. Yeah, and so for the last five years, the contribution that we felt is the best way we can give to the parade is that we have hosted the VIP main stage at Stone Way. And so it takes the parade about 90 minutes just to get to that point. So we get to throw this big street party before the parade even gets to us. Yeah, it was fun. You know, there's people in hula hoops, bubbles. And our band, the Harper Conspiracy, plays. Yeah, awesome. Oh, and so people fun. dance. Yeah. And last year, um, we decided we wanted to document all this fun. So we created a music video. Um, the song by the Harper Conspiracy is called Waves of Sweet Delight. And man, that was the culmination of all of it. Well, maybe today is. I am so excited to be a part of Re this. Really looking forward to today, my friends. This video is presented to you by Log from Blamo. Log, it's fun for the whole family.
The biggest changes I've seen in the parade from about 2000 to 2009, well, one thing in the beginning, in the early 2000s, we used to have the ability to take over these warehouses or these big spaces to construct our entries for the parade. Like one year we took over Stone Way Safeway because they were going to tear it down and they gave us a really low rent for it. And we got the whole building and the parking lot. And it was just wonderful. I think this is around 2003. And this is the year we did the Frida Kahlo float. And I remember being down there for like two to three weeks leading up to the parade almost every night, any time that we had free time to go work on our floats, on our costumes, to be together. We'd have food there. It'd be community. It would just be the most awesome creative experience. And as time went by, we weren't able to get these spaces anymore because Seattle was becoming more crowded and real estate wasn't as easy to find. And we would end up, you know, toward the end of that era, you know, making our floats at the powerhouse, which is a wonderful space I'm really grateful for, but it's right on Fremont Ave. So we would actually have to uh, block off the street to put all the floats in front of the powerhouse while they were being built. And we'd still have some sense of community when building the floats and things like that. But it was nothing like taking over the Safeway, which we called Segway, and having these wonderful creative parties. So to me, the biggest change is that we don't have the space to create, and we need to make space for new creating and young people to be able to come in and have those experiences. And you really need the space to do that. Hi, my name is Philo Northrup. I live in Reno. I co-founded Art Car Fest with Herod Blank in California, and we showcase street legal daily driver art cars for 20 years there. I've made seven art cars since 1983, and I'm gonna show you three of them here. We'll start with this old guy, 30 year old art car, the truck in flux. This uh, venerable road warrior has been a lot of places. It's Gone to Houston a bunch of times in the 1990s. It's crossed the Rockies twice. Can your sculpture do that? Anyway, it's uh, a good old war horse. It's also one of the last street legal art cars that is licensed to drive on the playa at Burning Man. And I uh, did that last year and plan to do it again this year. Truck and Flux aesthetic has ebbed and flowed over the years, hence its name. But it's always had steel flames and, uh, and a lot of color. This art car is Daisy Singer. And for this car, I started with a new shoebox, a Honda Element. And I wanted to do something antique and curvilinear starting with that. Hence the old ceiling tin and these horns give it kind of more fluid lines everything on this car is about a hundred years old all my art cars have living gardens on them um, some of them uh, some of the plants have been put away for the winter because it's nevada and it gets cold here 
but uh, they'll be coming out soon. And these gardens travel with me when I go. And they traveled in Daisy here to Seattle and down to San Diego and over to Montana and Colorado. Hello, my name is Kelly Lyles. I'm with a borrowed puppy, Wally. I'm an art car artist and painter from Seattle, Washington, and this is my car, the Accessories Odyssey. It's all about women's fashion, so it's covered with shoes, purses, and jewelry. Uh, there's little miniature paper dolls of my own outfits. In fact, here's the hat I'm wearing. By pure coincidence, I might add. So the car is just covered, and the seat, uh, the seat covers are, are faces that I painted on. No, I am not trying to get away with the carpool lane. It took me about a month to make it, but the hardest part, of course, was collecting everything. That took a while. And I forget about the extra weight. I've had to have the struts reinforced on the back hood that slams down on a regular basis. I love art cars! <laughs> People really do put money in occasionally, that's why I labeled it. I didn't have to cut it off because of wind resistance, So, uh, but that was an unexpected bonus. The name is spelled out, excess of accessories, because more is more in my world. <laughs> Look at Wally. <laughs> hey buddy, cutest art car, art car artist in, on the planet. Parade rules. Parade rules started with just three and these came from the Santa Barbara Parade and that was no written words, no internalized, internalized combustion engines, meaning no gas powered floats or cars, uh, which ultimately meant you had to push your float down the street and no live animals, no pets. Although over years we did have some easements, like there were Honda uh, generators, inverters, which were gas powered and quiet, and they were on board floats for electrified vans. And we did allow service animals, um, although some, somebody would say the bowl constrictor wasn't quite the service animal you would imagine. Everyone. I'm Shelly Busher. I'm from Houston, Texas, and this is the Green Man Band. I've been in the Houston Art Car Parade every year since 1993 and have collaborated or created a dozen cars, give or take a couple. The idea for this current car, my daily driver, the Green Man Band, came to me about 10 years ago. The image of the Green Man is, is a human face surrounded by leaves or having leaves coming out of the eyes, nose, and or mouth. To me, the Green Man is a celebration of our oneness with the earth and nature, which is a connection that I feel very deeply. So of course I had to create an art car about it. On this side of the car is a collection of Green Men that are located in the roof bosses of in a few different English cathedrals so that when you look up into the ceiling, you see them. And one of my favorite greeting card green men. On the back of the car are some carved images of the green men. These two in wood, and these two are carved in stone. And this is uh, an image from my favorite green man t-shirt. On the passenger side, are, is a collection of green men from many different area, eras from as early as 5 BC Samaria.
So this year, due to the COVID-19 situation, everything's all messed up. We need your help. You wanna know how you can help? You can donate to the Fremont Arts Council. Help us, so that way, we don't have to have this weird virtual parade. Next year, we can have a real one. So, donate. Hi, my name is Shelly, and I'm excited to be your Green Hat fundraiser. The Fremont Arts Council means so much to us because it gives people a platform to express their unique traits through art. Donate through Venmo at Fremont Solstice Parade. Your donation of any size will be truly appreciated. Three fifty Seattle with the Green New Deal. That's right. This is a demonstration of the Green New Deal right here. We have the scales of justice. Right there, the scales of justice with the good stuff on one side and the bad stuff on the other. To our org, 350 Seattle, Solstice Parade is a very special way to have fun, be creative, and connect with community. This is also a way to bring up the climate emergency and talk about it in a way that invites people to have fun and participate in solutions. supporting local artisans every year I look for that one thing at the solstice parade in the market that opens up afterwards um, that I get to look forward to you know picking out as my special thing um, be it you know a necklace made out of a fork <laughs> 
I've found necklaces made out of pennies before that had my birth date on them. Um, each little thing, you know, in some ways handmade, uh, local artisans, right, supporting that small business, um, all of that is really important to keeping um, the economy, but also community going. And that's the last thing I'll hit on, is how important community is in the sense that every year I go with friends that are super excited to see what's happening at the Solstice Parade. Um, we walk around, we buy the food, right? We're helping some family along in their business and giving them that opportunity to experience what it's like to uh, take care of their own and to make their own product feel proud of it and display that to the world and, um, you know, live their truth. I'll admit I'm stressed. The world feels like such a mess. Now we have to shelter in place. And I can't even touch my face. Wash my hands so much they're dry. Social media has gone awry. Not six, not six feet under, but apart. And I think that's only the start. So hey, let's social distance together. Would you like to watch another freezer stocked up on ice cream living our life? Emmett Till, Eric Gardner, John Crawford III, Michael Brown, Ezel Ford, Dante Parker, Michelle Cousseau, Laquan McDonald, Tanisha Anderson, Tamir Rice, George Mann, Frank Smart, Natasha McKenna, Tony Robinson, Anthony Hill, Maya Hall, Philip White, Eric Harris, Walter Scott, William Chapman II, Alexia Christian, Brendan Glenn, Victor Manuel La Rosa, Jonathan Sanders, Freddie Blue, Joseph Mann, Sandra Blonde, Christopher Davis, Marco Loud, Peter Gaines, Darius Robinson, Kevin Hicks, Demarcus Seymour, Willie Tillman, Terrell Thomas, Alton Sterling, Palando Castile, 
Terrence Crutcher, Paul O'Neill, Alteria Woods, Jordan Edwards, Aaron Bailey, Stephen Clark, Antoine Rose II, Botham Jean, Pamela Turner, Dominique Clayton, Tatiana Jefferson, Christopher Whitfield, Christopher McCorvey, Eric Reeson, Michael Lorenzo Dean, Tony McDade, Nina Pop, David McAtee, Rhea Milton, Rayshard Brooks, Dominique Remy Fells, Marsha P. Johnson, Khalif Browder, Delbert Africa, Sean Reed, Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd. After a long day of protesting, this group took to 23rd Avenue and marched north. They were led with no particular direction in mind, they said, just eager to continue using their voices to achieve racial justice. <laughs> Black lives matter walking down the road. Do we want change? Do we need change? Gotta have faith in this. Yeah. Believe your heart that you're finna be up on this. Keep coming back here night in and night out. I don't care what the Eden says. Yeah. Can trust what they're telling you. Ain't going out that way. No. No. Gotta have faith in this. Yeah. I'm blessed, I'm happy, I'm grateful that finally I matter and my child matters and my community matters. This generation's gonna make that change. You ain't going out that way. No. Give me something to you. Greetings, Fremont Solstice Parade. Chrissy J, Goddess of Violin here with a message of just hope. Remember, during times like these, it is tough. It is easy to fall into the atmosphere of fear and anxiety and depression. But remember, as creatives and lovers of creativity, we must keep this earth, the earth, by producing the nucleus, which is art. This earth cannot be earth without art. In order for us to move as one collective unit, we must unify the universe. And one beautiful way is to do art from our core, which is our heart. Peace, loves, and blessings to you as one human race. Always remember to keep the hope, faith, and life. Over the last 10 years, I feel like artists have gone through a revolution where they have found their independence and their voices again after being suppressed by commercial control. It's amazing because art has and always will be a time capsule for the people and places that they come from. You can't tamper with art. You can't rewrite it. You can't oppress art. Art will always find a way to reach those that need to see it hear it, feel it. I think that art has and always will be the one thing that truly connects people. Hi, my name is Peter Toms, and in 1989, Barbara Lukey and I, my best friend, co-founded the Fremont Solstice Parade. And uh, it's been now 32 years, and we've been having a lot of fun every single year in an unbroken line of public parade events. It's been fantastic. This year, because of the pandemic, uh, we're having a virtual parade instead, which is being produced and led by the board of the Fremont Arts Council, and Lee Marie has been doing an awesome job. And uh, this is a testimonial about the Fremont Arts Council and what it has meant to me all these many years. The Solstice Parade has always been about freedom of expression. And right now, we're engaged in some serious times in our society, where freedom of expression and the First Amendment right to express oneself is front and center in the work that we're doing as a society. And it's incredibly important uh, time. And so I am so uh, happy, I'm so gratified, so blessed that, uh, that the Board of the Arts Council is, you know, took on a, a huge task, all this work, 
to uh, make a virtual parade happen when we couldn't have you know a live parade. And I want to appreciate the board of the Fremont Arts Council for taking on this great work. Thank you so very much. Butterflies floating towards the ocean sun's glaze as cool breeze swoops over the tide. Souls drifting towards a new world, chasing an unfamiliar reality. Shape-shifting the past, discovering an alienating future. As we wonder what lurks among this new world. Targets met, curtains drawn, chests tight, small sips of air seeping through a tiny bay. Universe asking for a much needed divorce, allowing restoration to commence. Establishing new boundaries, understanding the needs of this divine sphere. As we breathe as one, catching each gasp, breath by breath, moment by moment. Celestial mortals are collectively resetting program minds that are now in sync. New dreams are born, skills learnt. Time is no longer a factor of now. Elevation adrift, this whitewater raft. Frontline workers are our arms. The, the time, time is, is now, if ever there was. Body unfolding, soul interlude. So please, dear gracious one, take me, please take me home. Hey Mac, remember when they said we would never be able to do fire at the Fremont Solstice Parade? Hi, this is Enrique. And Lee Marie from Let It Be Made 8. We are artists committed to serving the arts and culture community. We met at Burning Man in 2016, 
where we built our first public art called Love Nest. In 2017, we joined with the Fremont Arts Council, where we have had the privilege of working with other local artists. Some of our Fremont Arts Council works are the Winter Solstice Feast Mural and the participation with the Petite Troll. The Winter Solstice Feast is a joyous potluck celebration that honors Fremont Arts Council's volunteers. <laughs> the Petit Troll is a mini float parade that happens during Mardi Gras. This family event welcomes all to come build their mini floats at the powerhouse and then later stroll them down the 34th Street during the event. The Fremont Arts Council exists to support community art. They do this by providing resources, workshops, events, and other opportunities in support of their belief that everyone is an artist and that art makes our communities strong. In 2019, we collaborated with Stay Happy Collective. Together, we created Portals, a landscape art installation that explores the five senses. We love art and how it brings people together. My name is Jake Spottedwolf. I live in the Ballard area, specifically Sunset Hill of Seattle, Washington. I am from the three affiliated tribes from North Dakota. Uh, that's Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara Sue. Uh, I've been asked to give a little snippet of what the Seattle Fremont Solstice Parade means to me. And I don't know that a lot of people know this, but my culture, my background, my history uh, revolve a lot around um, ecology, environment, uh, being considerate, kind to Mother Earth. and. The Fremont Solstice Parade speaks a lot to me in the sense that anything that goes through that parade has to be recycled or recyclable, compostable, no motorized uh, equipment, either there's music by hand or, um, you know, it's on a generator. And I feel that's rather incredible considering how most parades operate across the country. Um, and it's a big statement that there are up, sometimes upwards of 20,000 people that can come to that parade and that something with that in mind, that sense of responsibility can draw that many people. So if we were to put that on a grander scale, right, to consider our impact every day, how we make things, are they renewable, are they sustainable, what's going back into our environment. And if we look at the Solstice Parade as an example of that, I think we could learn a lot as a model um, of how to go forward. And there's also the element of freedom of speech. Uh, I was 18 years old when I went to my first solstice parade. I'd written a lot of um, papers up to that point on censorship. And it's just been something maybe in my DNA um, that goes back as far as eighth grade. And that freedom of expression and that we're able to allow, you know, people riding around nude, you know, for a couple of blocks and a mile and a half, two miles. Um, I think that's important, right? That it's maybe only one time a year. I've never actually participated in the bike ride myself, but um, to allow people that sense of, again, feeling close to their true nat natural self, to feel um, the freedom of getting to do that in front of a crowd of many.
This is Lee Marie. My piece is called The Journey Within. It's a mixed media clip that takes you into an exploration through my lens in these current times. Art has been a part of my lifeline. I use it to express myself, to connect with others, and call for action. The basic idea is that we wanted people to celebrate uh, being out on the street and celebrate art expression without having to identify uh, visually as a particular group. They, you know, we wouldn't allow them to say we are the so and so, we are the you know certain band or we're you know certain group of dancers or we're this and that. We wanted uh, people to show us what they were instead of tell us mm -hmm. via words. You know. Well, what we found is that there's a big difference. If you don't have a sign, if you don't have a big sign out in front of your ensemble, uh, then you have to uh, devote more energy to um, costuming and to makeup and to telling the audience with your voice. You have to come out and say who you are instead. Now, we know that it's not always successful because the parade ensembles are uh, frequently incomprehensible That's right. to the spectator. But That's right. we, I don't look at that as a downside. I look at it as an upside. Really. It's an interpretation. <laughs> it's an interpretation. You have to think about it. It's an interpretation. And some of the greatest moments in parade history is, is when those ensembles that have marched down the street individually start interacting and commingling and uh, sort of seducing each other. That's right.
does art mean to you? Uh, it means to fly. It means to fly? Show me. Like this. your head, feel your pulse, it'll be okay, come with me and you'll see in a different way, you're expecting a connection just to compensate for a clear violation of the trust you gave, your rules aren't mine, you're a fool, if you think you can. Seattle is a group of adult volunteer cheerleaders who perform to raise spirits, awareness, and funds for people living with life-challenging conditions. Show us your spirit, empowerment, and action by donating through our website at cheerseattle.org.
Marilyn Kirka of Kinetic Creature Lab and Underground Art in Port Townsend, Washington. I'm a mixed media artist who works with wire wrap jewelry, acrylic resin paintings, and large kinetic sculpture art. For the last several years, Kinetics from the Great Port Townsend Bay Kinetic Sculpture Race and I have brought our art sculptures over to Fremont Solstice and Luminata. You might have seen some of my kinetic sculpture art, such as Dragon Ass, a 56 foot long sea serpent, or Mary the Monarch, who had a 12 foot wide wingspan, or you might have laughed at Thelma and Louise as they tried to roller skate through the parade route. Last year, I brought Murrigan the Mermaid and Mariana the Sea Turtle, who swam the parade route at both Fremont Solstice and Luminata. Murrigan the Mermaid could flip her nine foot tail and Mariana the Sea Turtle would move her flippers and bob her head. You might have also danced within the glow of my huge jellyfish at Green Lake Luminata last year. Today I'm standing in front of two warrior tree fairies. They were created to be part of Save a Tree, Save the World theme. As a McKay Grant Award winner, I am grateful for the support of Fremont Arts Council. And I am glad for the opportunity to share my kinetic art for a greater audience of glorious spectators. Please consider supporting Fremont Arts by texting green hat to 321 to make a donation. Happy Solstice. You may be asking yourself, where does your donation go? For one, it will help to bring the Fremont Solstice Parade back to your streets in 2021. It also helps support large scale art projects, workshops, and other special events. If you would like to help, please text green hat to 44321 right now. Thank you.
DJ Hershey. Let's go. Thank you. 